Chairperson, on the 1st of September 2016, just as ordinary people were thinking about hitting the sack, the Minister of Mineral Resources, Mosabenzi Zwane, released an extraordinary statement announcing that the termination of financial services to Oak Bay Investments should be investigated via a Judicial Commission of Inquiry. That was a reminder that although the Guptas are now less brazen, they are just as influential in getting what they want when they want it from President Jacob Zuma. In the past, the Guptas would shout jump and President Jacob Zuma would ask how high. Now the Guptas whisper jump and President Jacob Zuma still, you guessed it, asks how high. We have to be reminded and must not forget that state capture remains a clear and present danger to democratic South Africa. The Mineral Resources Minister's extraordinary statement was repudiated within 24 hours, and we were told that it was made in his personal capacity and that its unfortunate contents were deeply regretted. However, the unfortunate contents merit a second look precisely because they order, have such sir. serious implications. Honourable Mayne, will you just take your seat, please? Yes, Honourable Chief Whip. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chair. Uh, Chair, is it uh, parliamentary to dance on the podium? Oh, Honourable, Honourable Chief Whip, I request all Honourable Members, order. Honourable Mania, Honourable Mania, you may continue, but I would also like you to just whenever you get towards the end of your speech to at least formally move the motion as well. Yes, Honourable Minister. Chairperson, we should explain to the Chief Whip of the Majority Party that if your initials are DJ, it is <laughs> parliamentary. I, I think, Honourable Minister, you can share that with the Honourable Chief Whip. Continue, Honourable Mania. Chairperson, after hammering yesterday, I'm delighted to see that there's still some levity on the ANC's benches. But as I was saying, this debate is not just imp uh, important because of its implications for the financial sector and for the economy, but as it is important because of its implications for South Africa. The Minister recommended, of course, that the termination of financial services, including banking services and auditing services, to Oak Bay should be investigated by a Judicial Commission of Inquiry but he also effectively recommended a review of the functions of National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank. And this was done apparently without consulting the finance minister who is responsible for the financial sector in South Africa. And of course it exploded, thankfully, right here yesterday in this house when the finance minister contradicted the Mineral Resources Minister on the need for a Commission of Inquiry. So whoever said that the Mineral Resources Minister's extraordinary statement was, and I quote, going to cause inconvenience and confusion, he or she was absolutely right. And of course the Minister's intentions were clear, to undermine the Finance Minister, to undermine institutional independence at the National Treasury and at the South African Reserve Bank. And of course, most important of all, to establish an investigation into the termination of financial services to his good friends, the Guptas. We all know that the minister is a hired gun and he was contracted by the Guptas to carry out a political hit on the financial sector, the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank. We all witnessed the minister ducking and diving and his outrageous refusal to reply to my questions about why he released the extraordinary statement, which leaves us all with the uneasy feeling that in fact the recommendations do reflect the views of the cabinet or a substantial part of the cabinet and perhaps even President Jacob Zuma. 
And what was really terrifying about the minister's response was not just his North Korean political values, but the fact that he seems determined to push on with these bizarre recommendations, which if they go ahead will ultimately reduce investor confidence and make a sovereign ratings downgrade more likely in South Africa. Whatever the case, this is the perfect illustration of state capture, with the minister acting not in the public interest, but in the private interest of one family, and that family is the Guptas. We must not be fooled. The Guptas have learned a thing or two from their number one client by casting themselves as victims and the champions of the working class in South Africa. But the truth is, the Guptas are not victims. The Guptas and the businesses controlled by them are the subject of multiple investigations by the Hawks, by National Treasury and by the South African Reserve Bank, which of course explains why the ambassador from Saxon World contracted a, politi the, a political hit on the financial sector, the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank in the first place. Now we have to stand up against state capture because it undermines the rule of law. We have to stand up against state capture because it undermines public trust in independent institutions. We have to stand up against state capture because it undermines the legitimacy of democracy itself in South Africa. And we must stand up because the democratic state that has been captured fails to be a democratic state, it becomes a failed state. That is why we expect ministers to serve the public interest, not the private interests of one family, the Guptas. And make no mistake, we can stand up against state capture, and we can do so by establishing an ad hoc committee in this parliament to investigate allegations against certain individuals and their alleged undue influence. Honourable the Member, government. your time has now expired. <clears throat> no, the Honourable Member should have read the motion. I indicated that he should have done so before his time expires. He's got another two minutes later in the debate and the motion can then be read. It is printed on the order paper, so members can just reflect on that.